Hi friends, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to take a look at using acrylics as watercolors. So it'll be a, kind of a nice way for you to kind of get introduced to watercolor if you've only painted with acrylics and if you're not sure if you want to invest in watercolors. So I'm going to start, I've already drawn a couple plumeria flowers. I'll draw one with you um, just so that you can kind of draw the other ones on your own and it won't take too long on the video. So I've done a big circle and put a dot in the middle and I'm going to start with this with a big petal here and I'll put a link to the reference photo that I am using. So I'm drawing this first petal like that, not going all the way down because I know I'm going to overlap one. Kind of come around here, it's kind of tucked behind that one. I'm going to bring that down, not go all the way down because then we have the next one. These have thick uh, overlapping petals. And they're not a flower I see very often because they are a tropical flower and I live in a very untropical part of the world. And this last petal, so there's like five petals here. Now because I'm going to be going over this with acrylics, it's important that if I don't want my pencil lines to remain, that I really, that I erase anything I do not want to keep um, at this point because Otherwise, I'm going to end up with, uh, they'll be trapped under the thin veils of acrylic and I won't be able to remove them. So you're probably thinking, Lindsay, you're going to be using acrylics as watercolors. What? Um, yes. The thing is, if, uh, if you work on paper, which I am working on watercolor paper, if you work on watercolor paper, you can thin down your acrylics a lot because watercolor paper is absorbent. It'll be very similar to using acrylics. It'll actually probably have a little more bonding power because of the acrylic emulsion. You do not want to thin down your acrylics like I'm doing today on canvas because it's just not enough sticking power. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you're on an absorbent material uh, like cloth or paper, you're fine. And even with cloth, you might want some textile medium just to make sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't come loose. So I'm going to be doing a technique just like I would with acrylics. I'm using my acrylic uh, with my watercolors. I'm using my acrylic brush though because um, I don't want acrylic paint on my watercolors. And I'm going to start um, with wetting one of the petals here. And you have to work fairly quickly because acrylic paints dry really quickly on your palette. So I have wet the petal there. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of um of yellow and I'm using a squirt bottle to moisten the paints on my palette so I don't get too much water in there. So I want it nice and milky on my brush and I'm going to add that in there and you can see how it's flowing like a watercolor would. It's very pretty along the edge there. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of this rose color mix it right in there nice and inky and I'm going to add some of this along the edge there Then I think I want a little bit of that color in on its own. And just kind of let it float. And for shadow, I can do the rose and some phthalo blue. Don't put out very much paint when you're doing this. Put it out and then just give it a little mist with like a spray bottle or something so that it can um, just stay damp. And if you do have a mistake or you get some mud, you go ahead and blot it up right away with a wet paper towel, uh, I'm sorry, a dry paper towel. Otherwise, you just want to let it dry. I'm going to bring that up a little closer just so you can kind of see what we did right there. Okay, and I could soften that still while it's wet. Once it's dry, it's dry and you can't move it. But if I want, I can just kind of brush some clear water over that. Whoops, I got some white paint on that towel. I need to get a fresh towel. I can brush a little bit of water on there and lighten it up and even blot it a bit if I want to. Okay, but you can only do that while it's wet. Once it dries, it goes through a chemical change and it's not movable. And so we're gonna go around and do that to the interior part. Now these overlapping areas, I'm gonna leave dry for now. I got some crud on my brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there. The yellow flows really well. And these are the Aquila, Aquila um, acrylics. I suggest you try what you have and see if that works and if not uh, you could give these a try. A big set of paints I think is about $47 so it's not crazy expensive. I don't they're not gonna they don't flow quite as well as watercolors but it's something you can try if you've been curious about it.
I should have changed my water before I began this. I just did uh, another demonstration with those and I didn't change my water. And I got some pretty water. Now sometimes when you thin down paint it does affect the light fastness of it so that's something to consider. Um, and with any work on paper it's best practices to frame it under glass because it just doesn't have the you know you know you don't have a nice thick film of paint with a nice thick binder in there to protect it you're it's like the paper and the raw and basically the raw pigment um when you're thinning it down this much so you do want to take precautions if you want your artwork to last if you're just fooling around um, or it's going to be an art journal or something you don't have to worry about it so much Do that last one, and then you can go ahead and paint all the other interior parts of the petals just like this on the other flowers. I'll show you how um, we'll do the bud though in a second because we have to let those parts dry before we can go and do those little overlapping areas. And this is kind of fun to do if like you finish up an acrylic painting and you're like, oh, I've got all this paint left, I don't want to throw it away. Um, but there's still some nice clean paint. What can I do? We can do this. Okay, now I'm going to go over to this and I'm going to wet this little bud here. And I am going to put in this uh, nice bright red here along this edge. And you can see it flow. And I think that's what's pretty about watercolors is just seeing the paint kind of do its thing. And then I'm just going to mix up a little bit more of the um purple and do that at the bottom and let that flow upward you can drop in paint if you want to make it a little more textured and now i think i also want to um make the branch so i think i'll take some of that purple and grab some yellow together, make a nice brown. Oh, that makes a nice green when I just have that much uh, of the other color in there. Opposites make your brown. So when it was green and I grabbed some red, it made it more brown. And that's pretty watery pigment. I am not going to add more water to it. I'm just going to go ahead and paint in my stems at this point, which you're really not going to see much of. You're just a little little lost and found stem that's all we really need to pull the eye through the picture so we're going to do that same technique as i did on those petals on the interior parts of these three flowers and then we'll come back okay so the same treatment's been done to the other flowers and now what we're going to do is glaze onto the curved petals and you can do that with whatever colors um, you see, but in the reference photo, I see like yellow towards the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just kind of glaze on a really light yellow along the bottom of each of these kind of turned petals. And then on some of them, I see that there's kind of like a little bit of a gray. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the red, a little bit of the blue, make kind of like a purpley gray. It's super, super subtle. Okay, and actually, I can see this one kind of on the inside of that, so I'm going to go in and add that there. Um, I can add that there. This one, I can see it on the outside of the turned area, so I'm going to add that there. And just kind of go through wherever you see your shadows. Just want to get that form and this is just a quick um just a quick demo so don't uh you know you can put in way more time and um on this i'm gonna put some red in the center and drag that out into the petals because i see that as well before that dries <coughs> I'm going to clean my brush 
and soften. And I can drip in a little bit more if I want to, to make the transition a little bit easier. I find it, <clears throat> excuse me, I find it more difficult to use acrylics like watercolors than just going in and using watercolors right off the bat. I feel like I've, I personally have a lot more control just going in with watercolors, but probably because it's what I'm used to. And you want to do that same thing to the other flowers. Remember, the reference photo is linked in the video description, so you can go ahead and uh, check that out so that you can kind of be looking at what I'm looking at as you paint. So go ahead and do that to the other ones as well. And do that together. There's not a lot of um, if there's not a lot of shadow, you can just kind of glaze on that yellow and then see what needs to be added after. And I'm doing this fairly quickly. Over here, I can actually add glaze on some more color because uh, I'd like the color a little bit deeper here on this petal. You know, just adding water into your paint so that you get it a little bit more transparent. And just soften edges so it looks more like watercolor. Some people just don't like watercolor, but once in a while they want to they want to get that look in your art journal or on a painting, and this gives you that option with one type of paint rather than having to have, you know, watercolors if you're not going to use them for anything else. I do though think a handy little sketch a sketchbook box blah, 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 of watercolors is handy because you can be painting at the drop of a dime. A little bit of a shadowy purple color there. This, this flower happened to be a little bit more darker and shadowy, so I just want to represent that. So it's just, um, you kind of have to be quite, I don't know if fussy is the right word, you, ha you have to constantly be watching the amount of paint you put on, and it can be a little, um, uh, I don't know, it can be a little just fussy to to be constantly mindful of that. Now I mixed up a darker purple and I'm going to go in and just kind of draw some veinings on this little bud here. And get that in there. I think I want to do some sort of background. Um, so what I think I'll do is wet an area beyond where I think I'm going to want the background. And then just drip in a little bit of liquidy paint because um, I don't want a real solid background, but I want the flowers to stand out a little bit. I think I'll probably use that phthalo blue color that I have on my palette because it's nice and dark. And I have quite a bit left over from the earlier painting, so I'm just going to drop it in there and see how well it spreads. I like seeing a paint spread like this because it makes me think that there probably is not a lot of filler in it. And that's a good thing. You don't want chalky paint. Even unless you're, you know, buying chalk paint for home decor or whatever, you don't want your artist paint to be chalky because um, can take the vibrancy out of whatever you're trying to paint. I kind of like that little sparkle in there, so I'm going to leave it. Once I get to an area where um, I'm getting close to the edge of what I've wet, I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to turn my paper so I can reach it a little bit better, and I'm going to wet another section. I do like this because now it's starting to look a little more free, a little less fussy. And I cannot stress enough that this is just a quick little demonstration. I think I might put a couple dew drops on here because I had a couple of people request dew drops. So stick around, I will show you how to make dew drops um, 
in a bit. So I just wet that edge where the, the blue paint was in that wash and that can help to flood out a little bit. I just want to avoid hard edges in my background. I kind of like that little ruffly bloom there. That's fine. I just don't want to have um, really hard edges. Oh, and I see I had a bunch of aqua left on my um, on my plate as well, but I don't think I want to use that because that's kind of an opaque color and I think it's going to um, make it look a little chalky. And I think that's one of the things I enjoy about watercolors so much is just that that flow, how they just kind of burst and flow. And if you were just trying to do like a watercolor background on an art journal or a card or a scrapbook page, I mean, you totally do that with, there's no point to buy watercolors just for that. You know, if you just want to get that watery look, it's totally, totally do a bowl with acrylics and would look very pretty. And you'd have the, uh, you'd have the benefit of knowing that if, if the card got wet or whatever, it wasn't going to make the paint reactivate, which, you know, could be a concern if you're doing a postcard or mail art, something like that. I think it's important to see what your materials will do. And of course, try whatever acrylics you have. These particular ones are by Kusa Kusab. Oh my gosh, Kusabe? I'm probably saying it wrong. It's a Japanese company, um, but it's a lovely paint. It's a lovely artist acrylic. The pigments that are used in it are very, um, very what, what you'd be accustomed to. You know, the they're good pigments. They're not like fadeable dyes that, you know, kind of the cheaper paints use. No, but I, I would think that this would probably work with any artist acrylic or even craft acrylic. This is kind of, I was kind of a little worried when I started this. I was like, oh, I don't think I really like this. But now that I'm getting this background in and I see the contrast between the background and the flowers, I'm actually liking it. Because I was kind of thinking this this video is never going to see the light of day. I'm not posting this. But um, <laughs> but then after I'm blaming them, I'm like, you know what? I kind of do like that. So now I'm deciding whether I want to keep those hard edges there where the wash ends or if I want to wick them away. I think I'm just going to throw in a little water there just to soften it out a little bit. Ooh, but I like that. So what I'm going to do now is let this dry and then I'm going to come back in and we're going to do some dew drops on some of our, our petals here. Okay, dew drops are deceivingly easy. Uh, what we're going to do is go through and actually draw a few ovals and circles on your petals. So I kind of think of it, if it's sliding down the petal, it's going to be a little bit more uh, ovally. If it's laying flat, it's going to be more of a circle, but they're all going to be different sizes and shapes. So keep that in mind. Uh, try not to go overboard with too many, but, you know, put a f enough in there that you can, you know, really, um, really play with. So I've mixed up, I did the, the red and the blue, thalo blue and like a rose red and a little bit of that yellow. So I'm using the three colors we primarily use there. And I've got a liner brush and I've got a towel because I'm going to dab off some of the extra. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to zoom right in because you need to see this a little bit closer because this is the same process for every dew drop. I am going to, um, I'm going to outline it a little bit. I'm going to do on one side, I'm going to add color on the inside of it. And then on the outside, on the opposite side of it. Okay, so just super, super small amount. Okay, you see that? I'm just going to spread that, edge, just going to soften that edge. Okay, so make sure you have that paper towel handy so you can, um, so you can lighten it. All right, so we're going to do that to another one. We'll do it together, and then I want you to do the rest of them just like that. We're going to put some on the inside up here, just outline the inside, spread that around. Then we're going to do it, look a little bit more up there. And do the outside underneath it. Yeah. 
All right, so, so simple. We're gonna do that to all of them. Do the inside, so you're kind of like outlining the inside and dragging it in. And then we're gonna do the outside underneath it next to the highlight. doesn't take a lot so that's why I want that paper towel in your hand because it does not take a lot I'd like to if I'm going on the outside definitely if I have to reload I blot my brush off okay we've got one more over here that I want to do um, so I'm going to go to the inside up here, wipe my brush just fade, so I can fade it out, and then underneath, oops, I'm going to block that because I got too much there, and you can actually soften it, go in with a little bit of water before it sets and you can soften it a little bit. Okay, we're going to wait to do the highlight until that's dry, but I'm going to zoom out so you can see it again. Now, while I have this brush out in that color, there are other areas where I might want a little bit of shadow, and we can add that now. We just want to make sure that we don't make our flowers look dead. Okay, so I might just slice it underneath the edge. I've got too much. That's really shiny there. You probably can't see it, but it does do enough to pick that petal up. Okay. And you know what guys, if you are, if you're an acrylic, if you have watercolors and you want to do this with watercolors, there's nothing I'm doing here that you can't do with your watercolors. Okay, I'm just giving this option for acrylic since that's something this paint is, is known for and I want to try it out and I figured why not record it while I'm doing it because if I don't record it, people ask if I'll do a tutorial on it so that way I'll just have it, I figured I'd just have it done. It saves me from having to record something twice. Um, so, but just by putting in these really, really transparent layers, I'm able to build that shadow without really deadening the color. And when we highlight, well, I'm going to show you two different, two different options or tell you, I'll show you one option, tell you the other option. don't want that edge hard so just go in there before it sets add a little water break it up but the nice thing about this if I do it like this I'm not going to be breaking up any of the color underneath because it's already set and dried I also like to turn my brush as I go so I mean turn my paper as I go rather so that I can be comfortable and get a nice easy shadow in there I don't end up with any really weird hard lines I don't want them anyway. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. This one doesn't have quite as strong shadows, so just be a little bit more easy with that. And again, look at the reference photo. Um, if you have any questions on where the shadows are, that will really help you. I want to go easy with the shadows because sometimes it can kill the, just kind of make the flower feel kind of dead. And I want a little, I think I want a little more red in the middle of that too because I, because there's usually a little bit of red kind of radiating out from the center. And here I think I had a little bit of confusion of what petal was in front because I can see my pencil line I did not erase that like I should have so I'm just gonna try to enhance that a little bit and then over here I don't feel like that needs a heck of a lot of shading but um, I'll do a little bit not a ton Okay, so for the high highlight, there's two things we can do. Um, you can simply take a razor blade and just cut out a little highlight there, 
or if you've got uh, some white paint on your palette, let's see if I have, I do have a tiny bit wet on my palette from when I was um, doing an acrylic painting with this a little while ago, and then we can just add a really bright sparkly highlight this way. So either way, I think if I was doing watercolors, I would just use a razor blade, but um, you could also use white gouache. Now the highlight's going to go on top of your shadow. Okay. Just a little sparkle on top of your shadow. I think I need a little bit of water in my paint because it's not wanting to come off my brush because it's almost dry on my palette. And do a little highlight right on top of the shadow. Okay, then if you want, make sure your paint is a little liquid if you do this because otherwise it won't come off your brush. You can do a little bit of a another little highlight just down at the bottom. Very, very My paint's too dry, I think. You can just do a little sparkly highlight under there. Add a little bit more water to my paint and get it to move. Just a little slice. And of course, if you had any, if you felt like you lost some highlights, um, since you are working with acrylic at this point, and you want to, you could always just go in and make those um, overturned petals feel a little thicker and more substantial. Because this is thinned down water, like acrylic, white acrylic, so it's going to still have, be a little translucent and it will give you that, uh, you'll still be able to see the petal underneath a little bit and it will just give you a little bit more weight to the petals. And you might even be able to cover up that pencil line a little bit. And if you're, do if you're doing regular watercolor, I'd probably just skip this. This is just kind of like if you got it on your palette and you want to use it, and go right ahead. Because you do have that option with acrylics to go in with the white, and it's kind of, can be useful. And I feel like that's almost a little bit dark up there, so I'm going to go a little bit, glaze a little bit with that, uh, give it an opaque, translucent, semi-translucent glaze there just to soften that up and oops did you even see that I just added some milky white paint there and there you have it oops I just dropped some very dirty water onto my painting I hope you found this useful and you give it a try with whatever acrylic paint you have and if you want to use the ones that I am using it is the Aquila and this is not a sponsored video but they did send me some for free to review and I was just trying it out before I did a review so I would know what the heck I'm talking about when I review it isn't that nice when people know what the heck they're talking about I always think that's nice thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial and check out my other fantastic free videos on YouTube uh, for your viewing enjoyment thank you so much and until next time happy crafting